Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanza. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 26th of October. Mike Pompeo and Mark Esper arrive in New Delhi for India-US 2 plus 2 dialogue. Pakistani Prime Minister accuses French President Macron of attacking Islam. Sri Lanka increases coronavirus curfew zones after spike in cases. And now for all the details. Increasing pollution in the Indian capital is raising concern among residents, especially when the city of more than 20 million is struggling in the face of coronavirus pandemic. The air quality worsened further on Monday as hundreds of Ravana effigies and firecrackers were burnt on the occasion of Hindu festival of Dashera a day earlier. Air pollution in Indian capital New Delhi worsened on Monday as the air quality remained very poor, according to Central Pollution Control Board data. The air quality worsened a day after hundreds of effigies of demon King Ravan were burnt on the occasion of Hindu festival Dashera. Increasing pollution is raising concerns among residents, especially when the city of more than 20 million is struggling in the face of coronavirus pandemic. Besides vehicular and industrial pollution, the air quality of Delhi typically worsens in the winter when farmers in the neighbouring states of Punjab and Haryana burn crop stubble to clear fields. Health experts have cautioned that higher pollution levels in winter season may worsen the impact of COVID-19 since particulate matter remains suspended in the air for a longer duration. With ongoing festive season in the country, people flouting social distancing norms could also worsen the situation. In the next few weeks, we have many festivals. Air pollution levels are rising, which is known to make the incidence of COVID higher and incidence of death also higher. So there is a huge danger which is lurking there. If people violate social distancing norms, if people let pollution levels increase, I think these two things may lead to a massive surge in the number of cases. Meanwhile, the centre has told the Supreme Court that central government is planning to bring in a legislation to tackle air pollution and the stubble burning issue in Delhi and its neighbouring areas. US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo landed in New Delhi on Monday, kick-starting his tour of Asia in Washington's latest efforts to bolster allies against Beijing. Pompeo, along with U.S. Defense Secretary Mark Esper, is scheduled to take part in the India-U.S. 2 plus 2 dialogue on Tuesday. He will also travel to Sri Lanka and the Maldives during his Asia trip, which comes in the final week before the U.S. presidential election. Meanwhile, Esper, who arrived in New Delhi earlier in the day, received a ceremonial guard of honor before his bilateral meeting with Indian Defense Minister Rajnath Singh. Both the visiting dignitaries were later scheduled to be hosted by Rajnath Singh and Indian Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar for dinner. On Tuesday, India is expected to sign an agreement with the U.S. that will give it access to sensitive U.S. satellite data to help improve targeting of missiles and drones. Moving on, Indian diaspora in Canada staged a protest outside Pakistan consulate in Toronto this past weekend to remember the brutal invasion of Kashmir by Pakistan in October of 1947. The protesters demanded Islamabad to end state-sponsored terrorism while highlighting gross human rights violations by Pakistan over the years. Indian diaspora in Canada staged a protest outside Pakistan consulate in Toronto City this past weekend to mark Black Day, the fateful day when tribal invaders backed by Pakistan Army attacked Kashmir on October 22, 1947. 
the protesters demanded Pakistan to end state-sponsored terrorism while raising slogans that the illegally occupied regions of Pakistan-administered Kashmir and Gilgit Baldistan belong to India. They were also joined by Baloch activists who highlighted gross human rights violations in Pakistan against ethnic and religious minorities. So, in October, we Toronto in consulate. We have been protesting. We have been protesting that the Pakistan government has realized that the terrorism is not tolerated. This comes as the Financial Action Task Force announced last Friday that Pakistan would continue to remain on its grey list for another four months till February 2021 for failing to curb terror financing and money laundering as per its action plan. The mandates which Pakistan has failed on include action against all UN-designated terrorists like jesh e Mohammed, Chief Masood Azhar and lashkar e taiba founder Hafiz Said. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Sunday said that French President Emmanuel Macron has attacked Islam by encouraging display of cartoons depicting Prophet Muhammad. Khan's comments came days after Macron paid tribute to a French history teacher beheaded by an Islamist radical who wanted to avenge the use of cartoons depicting the Prophet in a class on freedom of expression. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Sunday in a series of tweets said that French President Emmanuel Macron has attacked Islam by encouraging the display of cartoons depicting Prophet Muhammad and hurt the sentiments of Muslims across the world. Khan's comments came days after Macron paid tribute to French history teacher beheaded by an Islamist radical who wanted to avenge the use of cartoons depicting Prophet Muhammad in a class on freedom of expression. Muslims see any depiction of the Prophet as blasphemous. Macron said the teacher was a hero and that Islamists were a threat to the country. Imran Khan in a letter has also appealed to Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg to ban Islamophobic content on the site, saying that growing Islamophobia was encouraging extremism and violence across the world. Prime Minister Imran Khan is پوری قوم کی ترجمانی کرتے ہیں اس محبت کی اس ادب کی اس رسپیکٹ کی جو کہ ہماری ہمارے پیارے نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے لیے ہے کہ ان کی ذات پہ اگر کوئی بات کرے گا تو ہماری تو ساری زندگی اور ہماری سارے جانے اس کے لیے حاضر ہے The cartoons of the Prophet and the French President's subsequent remarks have stirred outrage and protests across Muslim-majority countries, including Pakistan. Moving on to news from Afghanistan. The suicide attack on an education center in a heavily Shiite neighborhood of western Kabul left 24 dead and 57 wounded, many of them young students. One of the victims of Saturday's suicide attack was laid to rest on Sunday. Islamic State claimed responsibility for the bombing. The victims of the education center attack in Afghanistan's capital Kabul on Saturday were laid to rest in various parts of the city on Sunday. Most of them were young students from low-income families who were studying at the Kosare Danish Educational Center. 24 people were killed and 57 were injured in the attack on Saturday. Media reports, however, suggest that at least 30 people have died. A Ministry of Interior spokesman Tariq Aryan cited security guards as identifying a bomber who detonated explosives in the street outside the educational center. Islamic State claimed responsibility for the bombing. The group said in a statement on Telegram without providing evidence. <laughs> The attack took place in an area of West Kabul that is home to many from the country Shia community, a religious minority in Afghanistan targeted by groups such as Islamic State in the past. و کسر بسیار لایق درس خواهم زحمت کش 
The latest attack comes on the back of heavy fighting in multiple provinces in recent weeks, which has displaced thousands of civilians in southern Helmand province. Weeks after Sri Lanka had managed to control the outbreak of coronavirus infections for months, the re-emergence of cases has started. This has led to authorities increase the coronavirus-related curfew zones to 56 police divisions on Sunday to check the virus spread through community-level transmission. The island nation has reported 7,872 COVID-19 cases. Shops were shuttered and streets deserted in parts of Sri Lanka's capital Colombo on Sunday as authorities imposed a lockdown to stop a research in coronavirus infections. The re-emergence of cases started two weeks ago after the island had managed to control the outbreak for months. Authorities have said the current cases started from a cluster at a garment factory earlier this month. On Sunday, the country reported the number of cases had risen to 7,521, with more than half originating from the garment factory. As on Monday, the island nation reported 7,872 cases and number of deaths has risen to 16. Sri Lanka's parliament will also be closed for two days till Tuesday for disinfection. <laughs> ඉතින් <laughs> The curfew, which has also closed schools and public offices, comes just before the visit of U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and Defense Secretary Mark Esper to discuss regional security and trade. The visit of the U.S. officials comes after a Chinese delegation visited Colombo earlier in the month to strengthen economic ties. Nepal's government has implemented a clean feed policy in the country, making foreign television channels free from international advertisement. The policy implemented on October 23 is expected to provide the domestic advertisement industry a boost. However, impact foreign channels, especially India, which dominate the Nepali television industry. The clean feed policy in television broadcasting systems in Nepal has been implemented starting last Friday midnight, barring international advertisers from publishing advertisements in foreign television channels. The clean feed policy announced last year had set a deadline of October 23 for all cable operators to make their arrangements for continued broadcast or block the broadcast of those channels failing to do so. As a result, many of the foreign channels, dominantly Indian channels, have been taken off the air with TV screens flashing the notice about the provision mentioned in the newly implemented policy. Nepal ma big gap under clean feed person lag huni samandhi. You aintiasik nirnay pani ho. Hamilu you nirnay ko nimti. 2030 saal dekhi charan badda rup ma yes bise ma salphal isko nimti niti niyamali. The new policy allows television signal distributors to replace advertisements in foreign television channels with local advertisements as practiced in most developed countries. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.